This video will introduce the lab in which we will measure the ratio of the charge of an electron to its mass, otherwise known as measuring E over M, for the intermediate lab class. So the student learning outcomes for this lab are to further your understanding of the forces acting on moving charges by actually doing an experiment with them, and to improve your research skills by showing experimentally that E over M can be measured in a repeatable and accurate way. The lab objectives, in other words, what you will accomplish by the end of the lab, are to determine the direction of the current in the coil based on the circular path of the electron beam, make measurements to experimentally determine a value of E over M, and compare your result to the accepted value of E over M. So let's talk a little bit about forces on moving charges. You've learned in general physics too that a moving charge will experience a force in a magnetic field and in an electric field. In a magnetic field, the force goes as QV cross B. In an electric field is Q times E. The direction of the force on a moving charge in a magnetic field is given by the right-hand rule, and this is shown at the right. So here, if we have a positive charge moving in this direction, and the magnetic field is going into the page, we can use the right-hand rule to show that the force will be pointing towards the center, or, well, towards the left, which means towards the center of the circle. Notice that as the charge changes its direction because of the force, it continues to have a force pointed towards the center of the circle. And that's what these different points show. Do remember, since we're dealing with electric, uh, with electrons in this experiment, to consider the sign of the charge. So when you look at QV cross B, it depends on the sign of the charge. Now, for this charged particle that's moving in, a, in the magnetic field, the magnetic force is what's making the particle move in a circle. And we know that the centripetal force to keep a particle moving at a speed v in a circle of radius r is centripetal force equal to m v squared over r. So we can relate these two expressions to find the speed v of the particle in terms of E, the charge of the electron, so E is our Q, B, R, and M. Go ahead and do that. That will help you to make the final step of, this, um, of the physics in this lab. Okay, so now let's look at electrons and a potential difference. For example, a battery like this, or the battery symbol, where the electron is released from one side of the potential difference region and accelerated towards the other side. If we have a charge, like an electron, that's accelerated across a potential difference, it will gain an energy, E, where little e is the charge of the electron, so E equals E times V. And if that energy goes totally towards moving the electron, then it's equal to the kinetic energy, K. And we also know from general physics 1 that kinetic energy is K equals 1 half mv squared. We've got a lot of v's floating around here. Both voltage, or potential difference, and velocity, or little v. So all of those relationships you can now combine in order to find a, an expression for E over M in terms of only the potential difference V, B, and R. And you'll be asked to do this for the pre-lab question. You might find it useful as you do this to look at all the different expressions for V velocity and set them equal to each other. So in our experiment, our magnetic field, B, that we're talking about is generated with Helmholtz coils. And Helmholtz coils are pairs of coils carrying current with a separation between the coils equal to the radius of the coils. That's a standard separation that gives a fairly nice uniform magnetic field in the center of the coils. 
it we can do the uh, the physics to show that the magnetic field at the center of a Helmholtz coil pair is given by B sub Z, where Z means the magnetic field along the axis. In this picture, it's actually X, not Z, but that's the same idea. Uh, B sub Z equals mu naught N I, where N is the number of turns of wire in the coils, R squared over R squared plus Z squared, quantity to the three halves. And we can talk about this, or remember your general physics too, to see the derivation of this expression. Now at the center of our coil arrangement, in other words, right here at the, in between the two coils, the z distance would be equal to r over 2 from each coil. So the magnetic field, if you plug in r over 2 for z, you find this, 8 over 5 root 5 instead of r times r instead of this whole expression. And so our magnetic field becomes 8 over 5 root 5, mu naught and i over r, which when you divide that out is 0.7155 mu naught n over r times the current I. So it's now a magnetic field that's a function of current. In our particular case, N is 130 turns per coil and R is 0 0.150 meters. So we can find that the magnetic field is 7.79 times 10 to the minus 4 teslas per amp times current. All right, so putting all the physics together, we have our electrons, and let's suppose the electrons make a clockwise circle, like they start, this is what your experimental setup would look like, if they start on the right-hand side of the uh, arrangement, what is the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the current in the coil to make that magnetic field? I'm going to draw this for the pre-lab also. And in this section, study to understand how to use the, ex the equipment for this experiment. Hi. So this short video is introducing you to the equipment for the E over M experiment. I'll be bending down, putting my head at the same height as the experiment. Um, it's a little awkward, but I'd like you to be as close as possible to this whole setup. So I'm going to tell you the pieces. And the first thing you will want to do when you get to the lab is look at the wires and look at how everything's connected. So we're going to do that together right now, first introducing the overall idea. So what we're doing here is we are looking at the interaction of forces, magnetic forces on moving charges and electric forces on moving charges. So we do three things. One, we create moving charges. We do that with a heater, which is in there. I can tell, even with the lights on, I can see it glowing. It's a heater, and that's supplied with a current. When you get here, this is the only sensitive part of the lab, so when you get here, we will turn on the heater together. All right, so when you arrive, the little heater will be glowing. That is heating up a metal that's giving off electrons. Okay, moving charges. Second thing, magnetic field. These coils are called Helmholtz coils. The space between them is equal to one half, is equal to the radius of the coil. The Helmholtz coils create a magnetic field and they do that by putting current through the coils. So on this box there's a connection here that says Helmholtz coil. Let's follow these leads. These leads are going down to this power supply. And this power supply, we'd like to know how much current is going through the Helmholtz coils. So we also include a current meter. Right now the current meter is actually measuring the current in the coil. And I can adjust the current in the Helmholtz coils by turning this knob here. When I turn it down, the current goes down. Turn it up, the current goes up. And the magnetic field is proportional to the current. All right, charges, magnetic field. Now we need an electric field or a voltage, a potential. 
So we have another connection over here that says anode. And these two wires, let's follow them down, are connected to uh, a power supply that we're controlling with this knob. So the anode creates a potential difference that accelerates the electrons. We make our electrons, they're accelerated by the anode, and they then shoot off downwards. We can control that voltage by turning this knob up and down. I tried to make the room dark enough so you could see the glowing uh, loop of electrons, but the camera wouldn't work. All right, so now we've talked about three things that you will, that you need to know about. The making charges, which is done, we see a little glowing area in there. Two, creating a magnetic field, which we do with this power supply and this knob here. Three, creating a potential, which accelerates our electrons which we do with this power supply and this knob here. Right now everything is on. Let's go through that one more time by turning things down, down, and we'll turn the DC voltage off and off. So those two things you can turn on. Turn on the current through the to create a magnetic field, turn on the voltage to accelerate the electrons. The things you will measure are the current on this meter and the voltage on this meter. So you'll turn on the multimeter from the off position to measuring uh, up to 600 volts or 200 volts. All right, that is all of the equipment for the E over M experiment. All right, so when you get started with the lab, experiment with changing the applied potential and the current, so V and I, and watch what happens, the current is changing, uh, yes, and watch what happens to the path of the electron beam. Is it doing what you expect? Is it not? Make some notes about that. And now think with your group, about how you can make a measurement strategy that will result in plotting a line which has a slope of E over M or M over E. There will be different ways you can do this, but we know that there are two variables you can change, V and B, and one that you can measure, R, as you change V and B. Your pre-lab questions are, one, make a sketch of the circular path of the electrons, the magnetic field direction, and the current direction in the coils. And two, find an expression for E over M in terms of just V, B, and R. And that's all.